The young person's RIC is based on the adult RIC. So we took the wide-ranging research that we have around risk in adult relationships alongside the more limited evidence that we have around young people experiencing intimate partner violence and combined this to form a tool that professionals can use to risk assess young people who are experiencing harm in their own relationships. We also wanted to make sure that the tool was young people friendly, that we were using young people friendly language, that the risks that we were talking about were risks that young people would understand or recognize. So we had our partner organizations organize focus groups of young people so they could review the young person's RIC and make sure that it met that criteria. are less certain about what constitutes high risk in young people's relationships. So we stress that professionals must use their professional judgment when coming to a conclusion as to what constitutes high risk uh, when they're doing the young person's risk assessment. Young people tend to talk to their peers about relationships. They're not used to talking to an adult about a relationship. So professionals should remember that it takes some time to build a relationship with that young person where they feel comfortable enough to disclose the details of what's happening. When they do start talking about that relationship, the professional should remember that young people may have a very different idea about what a healthy relationship is. They're young people and this is their first experiences of a relationship. There might be some cultural barriers to disclosing that they're actually in a relationship. Um, they might be lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and having to disclose that on top of being in an abusive relationship, which is quite a difficult conversation for them to be having. So how long have you been in a relationship with James for? Four months. Okay. And, and where did you guys meet? Um, he added me on Facebook when I was year eight and he was year 11, but we didn't start talking until he left school and then we like exchanged numbers and we were talking for like a while before we got together. So you said that you were in year eight and he'd left school, so is, there's a, is there an age gap? Yeah, three years. Okay, quite a big age gap then. And, um, like, does your family know about him? Have they met him or anything like that? Um, my parents know, like, about the relationship, but they're a bit on edge because they haven't met him, but they know there's an age difference. But my auntie's met him and she likes him. Okay. And, like, does your auntie know some of the things that, like, some of the abuse that's been no. happening in the relationship? No. Okay. How would you feel about your auntie knowing? I really wouldn't want her to, because I wouldn't want that her to, like, dislike him, and I know she'd want me to end it. And I, I can't end it. Yeah, it sounds like that you don't want to finish the relationship, <laughs> okay. So young people tend to be less focused on how dangerous their situation is and more on how awful it would be if they had to end that relationship. So they're thinking about their social circles, the impact it's going to have on their friendships, their social standing, and less on how risky it is to be within that relationship. The other thing to think about is that young people are generally risk takers because of the stage of development that they're in in their life. Um, and so although in adult relationships, professionals will ask the question of how fearful are you of being in this relationship and you know, the impact that it could have on you. Um, but asking a young person that question is less of a reliable um, response or indicator of their risk because they, they have a different understanding of what risk is and, and how fearful they would be within that relationship. So you've been together like four months now, so how often do you see each other? Pretty much every day. Okay, so if you go to school and like your phone's off or um, you, you know, he can't get hold of you, what's his reaction to that? Um, well, most of the time I don't go to school because he's texting me like, come to my house. So I do obviously because I don't want to upset him. Mm -hmm. In a day, how many times do you think he calls and texts you? Um, like constantly, it'll be like, He'll message me, I'll reply straight away, he'll reply back, and like that. And if I don't reply for like 10 minutes, then I'll get like a, a phone call, or like an angry text message. So like if you was at school and you, oh, of course, you don't really go to school that much because yeah. he's... So if you are at school and say you can't use your phone, 
Well, what yeah. happens? One time I got my phone confiscated because I was texting him and then um, he messaged my little sister like, what the hell, why is she ignoring me? So I had to say like, I'm really sorry, I got my phone confiscated um, and he said, who are you texting? I was like, you, and he didn't believe me. But yeah, he got really angry then and I brought my family into it because I couldn't reply. That sounds like really, really difficult, like you're having to constantly be on alert for when he's calling you so that you yeah. can make sure you text back in time. Yeah. Abuse in young people's relationships can be characterised by high levels of control, isolation and harassment. And because these are new experiences for young people, they might think of um, a partner being really controlling as a sign of being really caring, or someone who's really jealous, they might mistake that as a sign of love. Um, and when you're thinking about harassment and young people, because they're so connected to social media, things like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, if someone's harassing them, it could you know, pervade all of those elements and really um, seep into their, their every moment. After that incident that happened with Facebook where he contacted your sister to find out where, where you was, you said that he, he didn't really believe that your phone had been confiscated. So what, what, do, you think, what, like, what do you think he thought happened? Well, like when he rang me and sent me the angry message, he kept saying like, you're cheating, you're lying, you're going behind my back. And I was really worried that it was going to turn into something else, like the time that he like seen me with my friends at the park, so I was really worried that he was going to think I was at the park again. Okay. It sounds like he was getting quite jealous. Do you, do you feel like he gets jealous a lot? I don't, but like my f friend said he, do, he does because um, like he deleted all my Facebook friends and it ended up me getting rid of it because he, he won't allow me to talk to anyone. Okay, so he deleted all of your friends off your own Facebook, so he had, did he have access to your passwords and things yeah. like that? Okay.